All right, self-love. Now, I couldn't sleep last night. That's why I'm up early. So you saying good morning, but you don't know I've been up all night. I ain't sleep. Rest in peace to the young brother. Uh, take off. Uh, one of the most humblest kids I met um, of this generation. And when we talk, Ferris, what's up, my brother? I know you headed to the gym. When we talk about this generation, Chauncey, what's up, my brother? Pepsi in the building. When we talk about this generation, we this is equivalent to my generation's Run DMC, the Migos. That's how I always felt. These guys are going to be living legends of this time. Um, and so sad. There's so many ways to go this way, but it's about self-love. And so we got to get away from the self-hate. We got to get away from uh, hating our own, being jealous of our own. Now, I do not know the details of why this gentleman was killed. I do not know what happened, but I could talk from being the eldest statesman of hip hop that I just feel like I have to speak on it, right? And so I told you on Charlemagne, I said, man, why we hate our own? You know, it was a time where we lost Big, we lost Pop, we lost Big L, but this was spaced out. This was years apart. It seems like we lose our young brothers every month. Every single month. We lose a young brother who's feeding his family, feeding his village, feeding his community, and inspiring. And so I know the young boys ain't really up at this time like this. But we got to talk to him. And so, inspiration. When somebody makes it out the hood that looks like you, that talks like you, that been through what you've been through, it offers a baton of hope. See, I had to see Lord Finesse make it before I knew I could make it. I had to see Diamond D, Showbiz, and AG make it before I could make it. Me, Fat Joe, and I never give up. I'm here to tell you God is great during good and bad times. And so, I feel like you got Joey Crack, you got the Fat Gangster, you got the Don Carter Gina, you got Fat Joe. I feel like we all praying to a God. Whether it's Allah, whether it's Jesus Christ, whether it's the Messiah, whether it's... I feel like he just got nicknames. He came through hoods and had different nicknames. You know how you know a guy from Harlem? They might know him by something else in Brooklyn. They might know him by something else in the ATL. And as long as you got God in your, heart, in your heart and you believe that there's a God out there, that this world would never have been created without God, the God of wind, the God of the sun, the God of life, the God of uh, everything. And so... Uh, Self-love. And so this young brother, man, you know, I'll never forget I was at the uh, Versus Dipset Locks. This guy, Takeoff, was there. And he's a big Dipset uh, fan. And I seen him at the end of the battle. He walked out. He looked so upset, so sad, you know, because he, he, you know, 
And I just knew he loved hip hop. And so this hip hop, whether I talk to Will Smith every day, every day whether I talk to uh, Buckshot Shorty, whether I talk to anybody in hip hop, we do love each other. We do have an alma mater. Unfortunately, we come together at times like this. Okay. Now, there's so much for me to talk about. And let me get back to what I was getting to, because this is a very important topic, guys. And I know a lot of you guys are going to work, going to school. Uh, when somebody makes it that looks like you, that comes from where you come from, and you know their struggles and you know their battle, it offers you hope. It lets you know that you can overcome and you can be successful, that you can be a king, a queen, a CEO, an entrepreneur, an owner of a business, a leader. Um, and so when you gun them down, before they even peak to their greatness, you set us back. Now this young brother is a legend. Without getting killed early, without none of that, this group, I've always said in this generation, is the run DMC of this generation. Fucking incredible, phenomenal. Um, my heart goes out to his family, uh, the whole ATL, uh, Offset, Quavo. And now, you know, these, from what we know, these guys wasn't talking to each other at the time. That got to be even worse. And so what the great Kobe Bryant said was, the biggest mistake in life is to think you have time. Because no one gets up thinking they're going to die that day. No one gets up thinking it's over. And so, it was a sad day yesterday for hip hop. I spoke to Fabulous briefly. And you know Fab, if you know Fab, he don't talk much. I done sat next to him for an hour and we might say, yo, yeah, talk about an outfit or something. Yesterday, he wouldn't get off the phone. Talking about, yo, life is short. We got to enjoy. We got to this. We got to that. And so I'm blessed, right? I never thought I'd be blessed. They try to kill me 30, 40 times. It's in the book. Book of Jose, right? So I'm blessed, right? I'm a lucky guy. But everybody's not lucky. And everybody uh, didn't come as lucky as me. Um, and so I got to see Method Man as a grown man. I got to see Raekwon. I got to see Jay-Z as a grown man. I got to see Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Ice Cube as grown men. Nas as grown men. Uh, but the youth... I'm really, really worried about the youth because they're not getting to see their kings and queens at an older age. These kids are dying every single month. Young Dolph, PNB Brock, Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke ain't even get to enjoy one day of his music. Now take off, 28 years old. And so, I could not sleep. And we as a community, we have to move on to a new level of thinking. We have to elevate. We can't sit here and say the white man keeping us down. We can't sit here and say this and this. We got to fight through that. And be the great kings and queens that we are. And so all those mentalities. Th this needs to be. 
a new era of self-love, a new era of community. And so before our time, when we watch civil rights movements and we watch uh, movies, many people together, they march together. We have more power and more financial resources now than ever to uplift our communities and to think towards a better future. Not looking in the past, not blaming nobody, but just looking at ourselves as a com community uh, and love each other, bro, because we really do. And so, there's a fact, and this has nothing to do with takeoff, but it has everything to do with takeoff. But I'm talking indirectly. Um, this is a fact that from two in the morning to four in the morning is the most dangerous time in the streets. Why is that? People having a good time, they're coming out the club, they drunk, they twisted. We know that when we're high, we're not thinking the same way we think as if we would think sober. This is a fact. I know I got best friends that smoke weed all day and they say, yo, I'm even better on weed. That's cool. But we know coming out the club, you're drinking. You know, you got to chase the girl, so you got to go to strip club, you got to go to the club. I'm not blaming this on the young ladies because the ladies are our most powerful resource. People think Fat Joe has an army of cock diesel guy, TS. I'm really protected by our sisters and the women. And and so two to four in the morning, you're coming out the club. One thing I learned is once I come out the club, I leave the club. I don't hang out in the front of it no more. Years ago, I used to hang out, talk shit. Uh, you know, if I, if I have to leave an event, I leave. I'm not hanging out in front, right? And somehow we go there. And that's where it turns bad. And in the Bronx, we used to go to this shit called the afties, the after hour, where you triple drunk and high and all the tough guys are there. Something bound to go wrong. And so we have to learn. This is something I learned as an older person Ro Paris, what's up, my brother? Is we got to keep ourselves away from these dangerous places. If you're in there, it's like this. You don't feel good. It ain't right. A lot of times you got to go with your gut, whether it's right or wrong. If you don't feel right. If you're with your man, but your man's with some guys that you're not feeling like, you got to get up out of there. Take your gut. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes it's wrong. You got to stick to your gut. I am addicted. It's a great <laughs> addiction uh, compared to all this other shit going on. And... It would turn bad. And so. I see more people die at the club. And hanging out. You know. In these dangerous places. And in violence. Than anywhere else. It just doesn't really. Really happen like that. If it happens like that. In the daytime. Or it happens like that. Somewhere nice. Damn. It's, it's terrible. Because you know. We've seen some shit. But. You got to find yourself out of these dangerous places. Because if you put yourself around that element, something's bound to happen. And but I learned this at an older age. 
Yo, Joe, you was always in the street. You was in the hood. You was this. But you got to stay away. And so what's going to stop these young brothers from getting killed every month? Every month. P&B Rock last month. Every month. And so what, you, what you're not realizing is that with every young king that you kill, it's another person of hope for, from our community. And so you got to understand that self-love is the new word, is the new slogan, is the new everything. Because I hate us hating on us on ourselves. We got to be happy for each other and got to love that people are becoming successful or whatever the case may be. I constantly, without press, without publicity, I constantly go to schools and go. I was just last week in Chicago talking to a whole group of men, young young men. Then I came to New York, New Rochelle. I went to the high school two days later. I'm constantly talking to the youth. Constantly. When you see me talk, I, I use total transparency. I tell you if I got beat up, I tell you if I won. But that's so that our people can know their value and who they are. And so do we got to do this every month? Do we have to do this every month? And we're killing our own. You can say all you want. We can do all the cliches we want. We, yo, they don't bring guns in the hood. Who brings the this? Who's that? Nah, man. Nah, and why any type of argument or whatever has to turn into violence? Why can't it just be talked out? Somebody makes it from your community. Be happy for them. And if they keep it real, they'll open businesses in the community or take you places you've never been. You know, I, I said, we went, see, there's a Catch-22. I went to Summer Jam, and there were so many guys trying to bum-rush the stage, right? We, it was, I think it was the Locks, it was Dipset, it was us, it was Buster. It was, uh, we was doing the, the uh, Case Lake Tribute. And I was almost embarrassed by how many grown men was trying to bum rush the stage to get up there. And then I started asking questions. Jamie, what's up, sis? I started asking questions. And I heard a flip side to it. And the flip side was, you know, they proud they men's made it. They want to be on stage with their crew. They want to be like, yo, my hood made it and I'm there standing right next to my guy. And so all these moments of love and all these moments of sharing joy together. Like Fat Joe, when you see me do a birthday party and everybody ain't Mary J. Blige. Everybody ain't Ashanti and Remy and every... And everybody else. There's guys and girls that grew up with me that don't got it like us. But they get the party because I love them and I love to experience them to experience my world and to know that they mean that much to me. Chubby Chubb, what's up, my brother? You too skinny out here. And so these are the things that you should be proud. 
People fought through everything. Think of yourself. Just say to myself, to yourself, what you had to do to get to where you at or what you want to do or what you want to aspire to be. And just look at that brother and say, damn, he really went through all that shit. He probably went through worse. That's why I wrote the book, the book of Jose. Because I want you to know you love this skinny shit, Chubb. You, you're going too far. You're going too far. You look great. You're healthy. I love you. You're going too far. You got to stop, Chubby. And so in the book, I'm just showing you transparency. So you could, you know, forget lean back all the way up. Just what Joe went through in life. Every little milk and cranny. You know, I was 14 living in a crackhead hotel. and just telling you I was scared. I would listen to Slick Rick, the show. You know, out of fear. I thought I was tough, but I wasn't. I was still young. And I tell you about all these things. But I got lucky. I kept fighting. I never gave up. And I got lucky. But it seems like luck is not on our side. And so I lost uh, Big L. My best friend, Tom Montana, got murdered young. Listen, I grew up with 40 guys, maybe 35 of them got killed before 21, 22. The killing's been around. It's just now we have social media. Didier, what's up, my brother? And so I want to know, since when is cool to videotape somebody dying on the floor? Since when it's been cool? You know, I watch the news. You know, we got a big problem in New York where they pushing people in front of the train. Every day, you know, mental illness. They push ladies, guys. Instead of helping the guy that got pushed in front of the train, they video it. They video the shit. Instead of grabbing the lady or the guy who's about to get hit by a train, I don't understand it. I really, really don't understand it. And I don't want to see that. And I have one of my best friends on earth send me the video of take off. I said, yo, why the fuck you sent me this, man? I don't want to see this shit. I don't want to see Nipsey Hussle. I don't want to see that. What the fuck is wrong? Not sitting up here acting like I grew up with takeoff. I know I'm like that. I know the man to be a humble man. Every time I ever met him, he was one of the nicest guys. Nipsey Hussle was too. I spoke to my brother Khaled yesterday, and everybody I talked to was like, I love you, brother. I love you. I mean, this shit crazy. This shit crazy. Well, you got to call your brother. Yo, I love you. I love you. This is all we was doing yesterday. And Callis, like, if you would see this guy, he texts me out of nowhere. God bless you. I hope you're having a blessed day. This is the type of guy that died. It ain't always the bad guy. It ain't always. It could be the beautiful guy who dies. This is why I was so upset. With the PNB Rock. I didn't know him like that. I met him a couple of times. He was very humble. But it bothered me. I love you, child. It bothered me because here's a young brother. I mean, we got so many stereotypes. The hood, right? We never gonna make it. We never gonna survive. We never gonna. When we get somebody that made it, that can help you. If, if 
you don't never know them, they can make beautiful music for you. Why this has to happen? And so I'm going to be honest with you. Rappers are an endangered species. And when I say that, I mean it. It's not safe. You got x Young. This guy never bothered, bothered the butterfly. He got murdered. How much more we got to go? How much more we got to go? Can we turn the page? Can we say to each other, I'm happy for your success. I love you. Keep going. It's just sad, bro. And I've been up all night. I'm not up early. I sleep good. I'm never up. But I'm up all night and I'm disturbed by people showing this video. I'm disturbed by our youth dying. I don't know if you guys uh, get to see, you know, the beauty. We did the BET Hip Hop Awards. Me and Ray Kwan and Method Man was hugging each other and and, and, and me and 3-6 Mafia was hugging each other and Dead Prez, we grew up together and Kim and Hi Sis, I love you little Kim and I don't know. You guys are dying young, fast. The one bit of advice I could say is try your best. To stay up out dangerous places. What does this mean, Joe? It means if it's four in the morning, you're leaving the club, and this is not to take off. I'm talking to everybody. Everybody. It's not to take off. If you're out the club, people drunk. Guys are jealous over their girl. You know, uh, all this type of stuff. Things happen. I've been there. I've been a part of it. I've seen it. That could turn into the worst night of your life. So I'm not telling you don't party or whatever, but just always just Move like you move. Now, you in dangerous situations. You know, one time I, uh, and, and I don't know what happened with takeoff in them. I do not know what happened. But I remember I got this one funny story. I remember I used to be in Harlem and shit. And I, let's just say I, I used to be by Taino Towers, right, on the east side. And across the street was Bob Lemon in them. Bob Lemon just came home, living legend. And so they shooting dice. I'm not even a gambler. I fuck around, because I know that's the legendary Bob Lemon in them. And, uh, and I go over there, I start shooting dice with them. And I get lucky. I start beating all of them. And after a while, I start noticing... A couple of these guys start having like an ice grill. Like, looking like. And so, I'm like, holy shit. I maybe, ten, that was Spanish Harlem. I, it was maybe 10, 10, I'm up 10, 12,000. And I'm realizing, holy shit. I'm by myself. I'm in Harlem. I'm taking these dudes' money. Some of these guys don't like it. And so I go and uh, I think quick. And before I get up out of there, I'm trying to get up out of there. I start giving everybody like $500, $300, like 
Just make everybody happy. Stalled it. Jumped in my whip. Got up out of there with a couple of grand. But. The situation could have been bad. I couldn't. I, I, <laughs> there's ways. I couldn't have even been here. Should have went the heck. What's up? And so. I knew how to get up out of there. But my brother Black Ant from McKinley Projects, handsome, fly dude, one of the best people to come out of there. He got murdered over a dollar. One fucking dollar. In a dice game, they stabbed him in his heart. And so, when they asked me, I remember I used to go to, <laughs> um, I used to be in Africa. I used to be anywhere, working, getting money, any any hood, any Brazil, favela, Puerto Rico, Caserio, dangerous shit. I'd be like, yo, what the fuck you doing there? And I'd be like, yo, my man Black Ant died over one dollar in my hood. If they paying me to go and, pay, and take care of my family, I'm going to do what I got to do. And so, think about that. Man, beautiful guy. My man Black Ant was just handsome, great guy. You know, he deserved to be here with us. And so, you got to get about these dangerous elements, these dangerous places. You could die. You might have to do something to somebody. The shit. The shit don't help. And so what I can say is, rest in peace, take off. I just feel like with my platform being uh, an OG in the game, I'll let you unk me now because I hate when they try to unk me, is just saying to you guys, listen, bro, you guys are the future. And if the youth ain't watching, because I know they are on their way to school, that's, uh, bro, us OGs, we got to talk to these kids. Humble yourself. Explain to them what you went through. How you had to do time for your mans. How you went to jail for no reason. How you lost your wife and your girlfriend when you went to jail because, or you was in jail over some dumb shit and your mother died. Think about it. Jealousy. I learned that a long time ago. I saw my album was Jealous One's Envy. Then I went to Jealous One Still Envy. But we got to get off that narrative. And stop saying, yo, you jealous or you did. No, self-love. But what my brother... Captain Dennis hit me. I mean, first of all, I don't wake up this early, but the early birds hit me. Captain Dennis said, uh, what he said, Captain Dennis said, loving black self matter. Loving black self matter. So Captain Dennis is Getting to give us some shirts and going around on the barbershop tour promoting loving black self matter. And so, God is great. God is everything. No matter who you pray to. No matter who you pray to, God is great. Being righteous is great. 
Giving back to your community is great. Open the business. And so we got to change. Okay? Stop the excuses. Stop the, you know, go own some shit, man. Go for it. And so we look at the lady selling the oranges on the highway like, I've had some friends my whole life and family members who felt like they better than something. I never got it. I never understood what they're better than. I never got it. Right? Because if you're in the projects, if you fucked up, how much better are you than somebody? And so you see a lady selling oranges and you laugh at her. You think, ah. Uh, next thing you know, the lady rents the store. And now she got a juice bar and a fruit stand, and now she's making money buying a house. I knew these uh, Chinese people. I didn't know them, but the Chinese restaurant on 166, 163rd in Tinton. You from my hood, you know. And these two Chinese kids, they would go to school with us, Mars High School. And we make fun of them or whatever. We go over there, we buy the four chicken wing, we laugh, extra hot sauce, extra ketchup. Argue with them, whatever. You know how you're doing there. And they would be living 30, 40 of them in the house. One day in the future, I seen these kids again and they broke down to me that everybody who lived in that house ended up buying their own Chinese restaurant. If you look at the, if you look at, now this, now I'm going to another place here, right? If you look at uh, these Chinese restaurants, I, I would like to do an investigation on who owns Kennedy Fried Chicken. That's in every hood. I'm sure they live in mansions. But they're making money in the hood. Yeah. But what I'm saying to you is. Believe in yourself. Open a business. Sell socks. Sell whatever you want to do. Eventually. If you don't win with selling socks. It'll give you a mentality. Of how to win. And one thing I know is that business is business. Yesterday, I had a meeting with Microsoft. I had a, what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing with all these guys? But what I do know is business. And so while I'm talking to them, I know business. And so you could be selling computers. You could be selling oranges. You could be selling cheese. You could be selling whatever. What I do know is business. We sell a product for a profit. Always make sure to connect is paid. One of my biggest rules. When I opened up sneaker stores, I knew everybody wasn't going to be happy with what I was doing. So I knew they would be haters. Although, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't really met the haters. And so, but just in case if there was, I always made it a habit to pay to connect. You know, sometimes when you do business, people give you a bill and you can pay them in 90 days. No, we paid them on the spot. Why, Joe? Why? If you have 90 days, the El Cheapos of the world say, take 59 days, take the 89 days and then pay the cheapos of the world. You know what I know? We still got to pay that bill. Whether we pay it now or we pay it in 90 days. But you know what? I like to pay it now. Why? Why, Joe? Because you never know who's hating on you. And when someone attempts to hate on you, you go, well, let's see what he's doing. Is he late? Has he been paying on time? And they look at it. Oh, my God. This guy paid extra. 
that eliminates somebody trying to hate on you. Because the one thing in business, as long as you pay your stuff up, they love it. And so at the end of the day, you get one life. That's it. There's no U-turns, guys. Have you realized that? Even you tough guys who kill people. Do you realize you take that man away from his family? Or that young lady away from her family? In 2022, I've been seeing like his domestic violence. Month. Who the hell is putting their hands on a girl in 2022? Come on, man. What kind of uh, punk? What kind of a sucker? What kind of a, a insecure guy? He's putting his hands on a young lady, 2022. That's domestic violence. The fuck out of here. It's disgusting. Nah, you can do great things. Somebody said money is the root of all evil. Not true. You can do great things with money. Call, enjoy your life while you're here. <laughs> Take your families on vacations. I got some nephews. Uh, shout out to my brother, Pristine Jewelers in the building. I got some nephews. We need to stop violence and spread love. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. I got some nephews, Beatty and Darnell. I'm so proud of them. Follow them on Instagram and it'd be like Beatty's birthday or Dexter's birthday and they be in like Bahamas and shit. And sometimes when I go to Dubai, I see young black brothers and sisters and, and, and Latinos on the plane and they chip their money up to go to Dubai. Go, man. See the fucking world, man. Live your fucking life. You ain't got to stay in the four corners. You ain't got to stay in the projects. Go live your life. Dr. Ron. Doctor to the stars. I love you, Dr. Ron. Give Hudson a, hit, a hug for me. Shout out to Rasha Bel Hassan. Salam alaikum, my brother. Alhamdulillah. Go enjoy your life. You can do more. If you've been contemplating, if you're working hard, and you're like, oh, I need a vacation, or maybe I should get it. Get it. Go on a vacation. Buy yourself something. Enjoy your life. You only get one. Kobe Bryant said, the biggest mistake you can make in life is thinking you have time. Because you don't. Nobody knows when it's over. So whatever you do to enjoy yourself, that's important. All right, y'all. We the biggest in the game. Shout out the power to the patience. Let me explain something to you. This you see by care is something I'm very, uh, my heart is very close to. A lot of people losing their homes, losing their families because of hospital bills. The hospital are supposed to give you the prices. The problem is when we're sick, we want to cure, we want to get over this. We never ask them, what's the price? Somebody could be in the same hospital to get the same procedure done. Somebody could be paying $300, somebody could be paying $4,000. But the hospitals are supposed to show you the price. They never do. Pretty much 85% of the hospital, it's the law. Don't show you the price. And so stuff like this, just me telling you this, might help you. These are the little things that cost you no money to try to help somebody. Put God first. Let me tell you something. Listen to what I say, man. 
You make me waste my voice. Let me explain something to you, man. Guys like me don't get up here and do this. So when I say some shit, try to take it for something. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. What does that mean, Joe? It's when you're going through a tough time. It's when you're going through a financial problem. It's when you're going through a relationship problem. It's when you're going through a health problem. That you turn around. If your so-called friends aren't there, they're not really your friends. And that's God's way of giving you a lesson for you to see who's really there with you. I told you the story about when I had 40 guys in, in, in Puerto Rico and I told them I was broke. I wasn't. 35 of them acted like, and guess what? I got rid of these guys. And I stood with the five that kept it real with me. Let your darkest moments show you your most clarity. When you're going through something, who's there with you? Who's checking up, even if they're too busy? Yo, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? We love you. You know, people going through stuff. They deserve to get heard from you. you yo, I love you. And God, in good and bad times, I tell my friends all the time, when you was fighting that court case and I couldn't see you, you was on your knees praying to God. Once you get blessed and you get a miracle and you're not guilty or you're home, don't forget God. Peace, y'all. We the biggest in the game.